Matt, what does the Iowa Code state about student searches? Iowa Code Section 808A.2 specifically references student searches in our schools. Now, the thing I'd say to you about this is that you need to be a little careful with this code section because after the code section came out, there was a case called the Jones case, which clarified that in certain instances, schools need to give prior warning before searching a student's locker. However, this code section is very instructive regarding some things that are don'ts that we want to make sure that our staff is not doing regarding students' uh, searches. And I want to go over some of those things right now. One, which hopefully is an obvious one, a strip search. The strip searches are not uh, permitted in our schools. The second is a body cavity search. Now, I'm glad to say that after seven plus years of SAI, I have yet to come across anyone doing a body cavity search, so please with that. Three, the use of a drug-sniffing animal to search a student's body. And we'll talk about this a little bit later regarding drug dog searches, but this is one we want to make sure that we do not have students nearby if you do bring drug dogs into the building. And four, the search of a student by a school official not of the same sex as a student. So you want to be careful if for whatever reason and I'd be very careful about having staff members put their hands on a student or search the pocket of a student, but if that were to be the case, we want to make sure that it's a staff member of the same sex of the student. Now, regarding this code section and these don'ts that I've gone over, I'd encourage you to talk to staff members before the school year starts about your search policies in your school as well as making sure that they're all aware of some of these things that they're unable to do regarding student searches. Matt, what considerations should be given when searching technology? One of the first considerations that should be given when searching technology is whether or not the technology is owned by the student or the student's family or whether it's school-owned technology. Now, I'd encourage you in your acceptable use policy to go over what's permitted as far as use of technology, and this would cover not only your school-owned technology, but also personal technology when that technology is being used at school or at school activities. With school-owned technology, you're also able to cover use away from school. So the school will have more authority to perform searches if a student violates that acceptable use policy, even if the activity occurs off campus. So that's something I'd take into consideration. Generally speaking, with personal technology, the bar is going to be a little bit higher regarding when you're going to be able to search that technology. So typically, you're wanting to ensure that you have reasonable suspicion to search the technology. Now, what might that reasonable suspicion look like? Let's say during a test, a, a teacher sees a student, and the student is underneath the desk, and they, they appear to be doing something underneath the desk with their cell phone, and during that test, in that instance, the technology is not permitted to be used. Well, in that instance, the teacher seeing the student with that phone out underneath the desk would give the teacher reasonable suspicion to go ahead and search the phone to see if the student was using the phone to cheat on the test or to perhaps send the questions to another friend who might be in another location who may be taking that test later. Now something to, to also keep in mind regarding searches of technology is even if you have that reasonable suspicion to search the technology, so back to this example where they're using this during the test and now you have that suspicion to search the phone, is you want to make sure that it's clear which staff members are going to go ahead and search that. In some instances, you might find it appropriate to permit teachers to go ahead and perform that search. In other instances, you might prefer in your building for the teacher to go ahead and take that technology and take it down to a school administrator or some other school official who'd be performing the search. Now, whoever might be performing the search, you want to ensure that they only search that portion of the phone that relates to the area upon which there's reasonable suspicion. So if there's reasonable suspicion that they might have been texting during a test 
or sending messages like that, there would not then be a reason to be looking in other areas of their phone, such as old videos they might have on their phone or, or old photos that they might have. So you want to be careful about that. So in some instances, they may go on the phone to perform a search, but then on the lock screen, it perhaps has a photo of the student partying or somewhere out where they have a beer in their hand, and this may be a good conduct violation under other school policy. Now, while that was not the purpose for searching the phone, since that came up immediately and the staff member was not attempting to get into some area in which they did not have authority to, to search, it is permissible in those instances for staff to go ahead and use that photo that was found on the lock screen against the student. Matt, are we permitted to use drug dogs? If so, what recommendations do you have? One of the common questions I've had over the years regarding searches is whether or not you're able to bring in drug dogs. And technically, uh, the use of drug dogs actually is not a search. Both the United States Supreme Court and the Iowa Supreme Court have stated that the use of drug dogs is not a search. In fact, those drug dogs may later give you reasonable suspicion to perform a search. So the answer to the question of, as to whether you may bring in drug dogs is, yes, you may bring in those drug dogs. Now, I would encourage you, if your school district is considering the use of drug dogs, I'd encourage you ahead of time to put something out to your school community so that parents, guardians, and students are aware that there's a possibility that drug dogs may be brought in. Now, hopefully this will provide some type of deterrent as well if students know that you may bring in those drug dogs, so hopefully it encourages them, them to keep drugs out of your schools. Now, if, if you do decide to use drug dogs, one of the things that I'd ask that you do is to make sure that if, if the drug dogs are used during the school day, that you go ahead and have your staff put the students in lockdown. Now, when the students go into lockdown, and, and the reason we put them in lockdown is, again, back to the code section where we may, may not have dogs searching students. So in order to ensure that, we'd encourage you to be in lockdown. That way there just is not going to be any way that those dogs are going to be around the student. So please make sure that you're doing that. But when you go into a lockdown, I'd strongly encourage you to be very clear with your student body as well as with parents and guardians as to the reason for the lockdown. Go ahead and let them know that there are drug sniffing dogs that are entering the school and that's why they're in lockdown. If you do not do that, you may have a situation where students text or put something, tweet something on Twitter or otherwise put something out there where they, they state that there's a bomb sniffing dogs in the schools or something to that effect. And next thing you know, you have hundreds of parents calling the schools and local media is contacting you about these bomb sniffing dogs. So be very clear up in, and upfront with your students as well as with your parents and guardians that the, the reason they're in lockdown is for the drug dogs to come in. Now, another thing that you might consider doing if you bring dogs in while school uh, students are in the building is to have students place their backpacks or other personal items in the hallway. Now, if you do this, you'd want to make sure that you have supervision of those backpacks so you don't have allegations later that, that something was stolen from a backpack but I know that some of you do allow for your students to carry around such bags during the school day. So it might be a good idea to go ahead and have them place those in the hallway so that the drug dogs can go through and not only be able to sniff the lockers, but then also be able to sniff those bags as well. As soon as the dogs are cleared, then the staff would be able to go ahead then and, and permit the students to go out and grab their bags and bring them back into the classroom. One other point that I encourage you to, to do is that if, if you have a do drug dog that hits on a locker, be discreet about bringing the student out of the classroom. So if you're in lockdown and you have dogs through here, as I've encouraged you to do, you've let them know that they're drug sniffing dogs, it would not be the best idea to, in the middle of that lockdown, pull a student out immediately from the classroom to have them go to their locker. 
because that would give you know lead others to believe that that student is has drugs in their locker or uh, that they're violating the law. So I'd encourage you to be more discreet about pulling that student out and perhaps getting the student after the class period is over. As long as you have custody of whatever uh, was in the locker, that should not be an issue of pulling that student out at a later time. Matt, when and to what extent are we permitted to search student lockers, desks, bags, or other areas? In addition to the use of drug dogs, another question that comes up relates to when you're permitted to suit, uh, search student areas. And regarding any student area where there's an expectation of privacy, we need to make sure that our staff has reasonable suspicion to search that student area. So if a staff member, for instance, has uh, one student that comes to them in class and states that they saw Tanner had a pocket knife out and he put the pocket knife in his backpack, then based on that allegation and that student sharing that information, for instance, school officials would then have reasonable suspicion to search Tanner's backpack to see if he indeed has that weapon. Now, as a search is performed, if you do have reasonable suspicion, make sure that you're only searching areas where you might be able to find whatever the student is alleged to have, which is in violation of your student policies or state or federal law. So for instance, in the case of this allegation that a student has a knife or a weapon with them, if the allegation is that the student had a knife that was five or six inches long, it would not be permissible in those instances for staff members to go ahead and search part of a backpack that was a smaller compartment that was only two or three inches in length. You would only have reasonable suspicion to search those areas that may potentially hold whatever it is that's in violation of your school policy or state or federal law. May we use breathalyzers at a school dance? I've received many calls and emails over the years regarding the use of breathalyzers at student dances. One of the things I'd encourage you to do is to make sure that you are not randomly using breathalyzers or breathalyzing every student who is going to attend a dance. You want to make sure that you have reasonable suspicion if you're going to use the breathalyzers. Now, something to keep in mind is there's nothing wrong with, with a volunteer or school official being wrong about there being reasonable suspicion. So let's say that you're alerted by a chaperone who's a parent that he or she believes that someone is using alcohol, uh, they're stagger staggering around, or the volunteer thought they had bloodshot eyes. And based off of that, the school principal then decided to administer a breathalyzer to that student. In that case, you did indeed have reasonable suspicion based off of that student staggering around in the bloodshot eyes to, to use the breathalyzer. However, it may turn out that the student blows all zeros on the breathalyzer. And the point that I'd make is that's just fine. So I'd encourage you, again, rather than using breathalyzers to all students, which in my opinion would violate law, I'd encourage you to make sure that you have reasonable suspicion.